for bringing us, Lord God, at your feet. For bringing us, Lord God, at your temple. We're joining our voices. We're joining, Lord God, our prayers. We're joining, Lord God, our thoughts with the host of heaven. And we say, indeed, Lord God, holy, holy, holy are you. Holy are you, Lord God, to receive praise and adoration. To receive honor and worship. To receive, Lord God, all glory. To receive, Lord God, all praise. Let your word sanctify us. Let your word sanctify our lives. Let your word sanctify us. We surrender unto you, Lord God, our burdens. We surrender unto you, Lord God, our mind. Speak, for we are listening. Speak, for we are hearing. Speak, for we are your servants. Speak unto us and let your word be true. Now and evermore, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There to somebody welcome in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God today that he has provided unto us came from, comes from uh, the book of Mark chapter 10. From verse 46 to verse 52. I was, I went with my wife and children, and as we went out, we were in the car, and uh, I was listening to, there is a video that popped on my feed, and I was listening to that video, and there is a man of God who was sharing, and as he was sharing, I was captivated by the word that he was sharing. And as I was so captivated, I said, Jesus, that is what I have been preaching about. Why don't people don't hear it? <laughs> and Abby, my daughter, was in the back. I was so captivated by what the man of God was sharing that she said, Daddy, how can a man of God be amazed by another man of God. <laughs> I said, because on his lips, there is the word of God. And a man of God can only rejoice when he heareth the word of God, the sound doctrine. And my wife came in the car and then I said, baby. Why well, I called her baby. <laughs> I said, hear this. So the man of God went through. It was about a video of about, I don't know, 10 or 7 minutes. And I shared with the, uh, yeah. I told my, my, my daughter, I said, I need to share again about this word. So usually when I plan to do, share the word of God, by the time Sunday morning arrives, God changes it. <laughs> so I thought he was going to again change it. So, but I was ready. But by the grace of God, we're going to share it. ba ti me us is the son of Timaeus. This is something very important. When you read the word of God, the Bible says, ba ti me us, the son of Timaeus. Timaeus. Already, his name already means son of Timaeus because Bar means son in Hebrew. Hallelujah. When you hear Bar Jesus, there is another guy, Jesus, somewhere, not the Jesus that we know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bartholomew. Bar means B R B A R, son. Son of. Barnabas, the son of Abbas. Abbas means father. Let's take with me the book of Mark. 
as we are in chapter 10. Can we have it on the screen, please? Hallelujah. Amen. From verse 46. Mark chapter 10, mm -hmm. from verse 46. Mm -hmm. And they came to Jericho. Mm -hmm. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples. And they came to Jericho. Who remembered Jericho? Hey, Jesus. Send, send somebody revelation. Listen. This word, this word must do something in my life today. I don't know about you, eh? but I say in my life. Because, you see, the Bible says, and they came to Jericho. Who remembers Jericho? What happened at Jericho? Ow! Oh, no, 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 no. Ow! They shouted. Are you what I'm saying? The Bible said, Ah, Jesus. Somebody said revelation. <laughs> These whole years, I did not see that <laughs> until now. Lord Jesus, thank you. It's not random or coincidence. Thousand years ago, there was a group of people crossing the Jordan whom God said, I'm going to order you to walk around Jericho seven times. And after you walk seven times, walk seven times the seventh time. And after you have walked seven times the seventh time, let those who carry the trumpet sound the trumpet and let the people and let the people shout. You see, the people of Israel, as they were going to the land, they had a need. Somebody say, I have a need. When you don't have a need, you cannot shout. Amen. You see, I was born and raised up Catholic. In a Catholic church, when you go to the mass, and you sit down, the priest comes, takes the, I would say that, omelie. Omelie? I would say it in, in English. Lomelie, Lomelie. No, Lomelie. The re, the, you know, it's it, it, it sermon if you want. But we don't say sermon. There is a word in English anyway. So, that sermon is synchronized throughout the churches of Catholic churches. Because they have sex. And he comes, he read exactly the script, and that's it. And every day I was going, although we heard Jesus, I could not understand the fountain of his love. Until one day the Lord, by his grace, opened my eyes. So I may see. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Lord, oh, Jesus Christ. Lord, open my eyes. So I may see like you see. Nicodemus was a teacher of the to who? And when he came to Jesus Christ, the Lord told him a simple, basic thing. You see, you, you and I today, because we read through the word of God, we kind of like a, uh, we don't, we, we kind of like a see it in a way that is already answered. But I can guarantee you, if we were Nicodemus that day, and the Lord Jesus says, unless a man be born again, we would have also like the Kedemus say, ah, 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 can I be born again? Because until then, the way they have made and done God, the way they have uh, worshipped God was so, was so, how uh, do I call it? Uh, was so 
caricature. How we say that? Huh? Yeah, he, like like it was like a machine. They do like this. They do like that. They do. They, 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 yeah, or, or they have to worship God in a certain way. And uh, you feel what I'm saying? He was robotic, legalistic. He was everything. See, the Lord Jesus came and he says, even though the children of Israel were called his people, he was still looking for a true worshiper. So that tells me that throughout the lives of the children of Israel, after all the worship they did, he was not still a true worshiping. So why is the Lord comes and now telling you and I he's looking for the true worshiper? Well, see, we go back to Jericho. In the time of Jericho, the Lord told them, I'm going to give you, he told to Joshua, Joshua chapter 1. He speaks unto him, he says, see, I have given unto you Jericho and his king and his mighty men of Valor. Go. But though he has already given the victory to Jericho, I mean to, to uh, Joshua, he still told him, go. But the way he had to fight was not in the way that Joshua understood. We want to carry our fight and our prayer life in the way we understand. But until God opens us your life and your heart, your spirit and your mind to see how he wants you to do, it will be uncomfortable. But you see, you got to be uncomfortable until you become comfortable. God will lead you in ways that are unusual to your understanding. So it tells to the children of Israel, when you go on the wall, don't use the weapon that you are used to. Don't use the weapon you are used to. Until they arrive at Jericho, they have already built and then manufactured some weapon. Whether it was a, a sword, whether it was a, a knife, whether it was a, how do you call it, a spear. But he said, no, don't use that. Use two elements. Your feet and your voice. And the thinking. But you see, Jericho was not a wall like the wall of your house. No. The wall was that large from here to there. It was a large wall. It was a planted, solid wall. It was not like the wall between uh, Mexico and America. Uh -uh -uh. It was a strong wall. So when the children of Israel comes around and start walking around according to the word of God, the people of Jericho look at them and they're like, they're crazy. Because you cannot defeat such a wall with just doing nothing. And then God tells them, after all, you got to shout. I have learned something with God. I have learned that until I follow what he says, even when it does not look like pretty, I will not get the result of it. See, David... David, the Bible said that he got up and he started praising God. And when he started praising God, who was complaining? Why? Why? Another thing, because he was a king. You see, a king has to have manners. Tell to somebody manners. And you know, manners. I speak French. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it's M A N N E R S. When you go and you meet the president, the president must sit in a certain way. Are you following what I'm saying? It's not agitating like I'm doing it right now. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He has to sit in a certain ways. But you see, there are times when God sees you, your life and your heart just explode. So he told them, shout. So what happened to Jericho? And what happened to the children of Israel, a thousand years ago, was about to be repeated in the life of Bartimaeus. Give me the word. And they came to Jericho. Jericho. 
And as he went out of Jericho, Jericho with his disciple and a great number of people, people. who? Blind Bartimaeus. The? Son of Timaeus. Hallelujah. You see, the reason why he's still blind was because he was the son of the wrong father. <laughs> <laughs> he had to be born again <laughs> to have another father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to change your gear so that the things in your life start now shifting so that the things in your life that are still gripping on you start living. But you have to come to a place until you see what God says, until you hear it, what God says. You have to come in a place where you tell to yourself, I do not want to sit in the same spot as I used to. Because you see, Bartimaeus, he sat in the same spot for a long time. He did the same thing for a long time. But one day, hallelujah, you see, your, your routine that you do all the time, there is only one day God visits you. Are you what I'm saying? By the time he visits you, you need to have and have understanding. You need not to miss your day of the visitation. <laughs> Say somebody, I do not want to miss the day of my visitation. It was, it, it, I would say it was Sunday like usual for him. But one day, one day, there was a great number of people. And blind Bartimaeus, he does not see. So he has to be led by either somebody or by the sense of his touch. Although he did not see the miracles that God did. Hallelujah. Although he did not see the miracle that God did, he heard the sound of it. Tell me how many words of God you heard and you are seeing the same spot. Tell me. You see, he was in a spot and he heard the word. Because you see, the Bible said that the fame of Jesus Christ went ahead of him. Hallelujah. So he certainly heard the power of God. He heard the miracles. He heard the things that were ongoing. And then there was a people, meaning that in your daily life with different voices talking to you, the radio, the channel, the TV, the people, the different voices, but you need to hear the right one. Hallelujah. So that day, he sat by the highway begging. You see, sometimes we as Christians, we do the same thing. We are on the highway of miracles. The highway of the manifestation of God. Because we have heard and then because we have prayed, because we have believed. But sometimes we operate in a place where we kind of like a quote-unquote begging prayers. You know what I'm saying? It is good that we pray for each other. But there are times when God is about to do something in our lives, we need to, on dit, retrousser les manches. Uh, fold our sleeves. Because we are to enter in places and time that are not usual to the atmosphere in which we have been growing. So blind bar Timaeus. He was <laughs> Jesus. Oh. He was trying to find his ways. And then as he was trying to find his ways, he could only do as much as he could because he was limited by how he could see. Are you following? The way you operate. Hallelujah. The way you operate. Explain on how far you can see.
Verse 47. Verse 47. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. You see, in the Southern Baptist Church, where my wife grew up, she said over there, they don't know much about the Holy Ghost, right? Like the Holy Ghost is uh, just an abstract thing. In some places, they don't know much. Some of them actually don't even believe in miracle to start with. Okay? They, they just don't. Period. They said it was done away with. The word of God does not say that. The word of God said that it will come a time. It will be done away with. Because when you and I, we are with Jesus, nobody need to do miracle there. When we are with the Lord, we don't need to prophesy. He knows everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, she said that in a place where she was, uh, when she was growing up, she goes, she will go to two different churches, one of a mom and one of a dad. When she goes to the dad's church, they're like a robot sitting like this. And you cannot clap. <laughs> when they go to the mom church, <laughs> so since they were children, they were loving it. Yeah! They don't know why they're jumping, they're jumping. Yeah! She was jumping, she didn't understand what she was jumping for. <laughs> but you see, Bartimaeus, his father did not teach him the power of God. So all he had was to learn to beg. You see, when the word of God has not penetrated your heart in the place where he opens up from inside, you will only operate in the ways of God in a very limited way. Because inside needs to be open, like a, a container that is ready to receive. So, blind Bartimaeus, there was a large, large crowd. And I can imagine the noise, I can imagine the talkers. But you see, he was not interested into many noise. He was just interested into one noise. He wanted to know exactly what's going on. They told him, listen, it's Jesus passing by. Let's read again. And when he heard that he was Jesus of uh -huh. Nazareth. But you see. They did not explain to him that it's Jesus. He did the miracle. He resurrected the dead. Da, 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 da. They did not explain none of that to him. So meaning the fame of Christ already went to his hearing. Hallelujah. Because at that point, there is no explanation of what God has made, which work has been done. The only thing that the Bible says here is that they told him it was Jesus. It's like you, you hear in the word of God, you grow in the word of God, you read the word of God, you pray, you fast, you worship. But there is one day where the Lord in a specific way comes closer. But that day is someday in that day where a miracle needs to happen. But if you don't see that miracle or that day, if you don't seize it correctly, that same day where God is intended to do something in your life, unusual something, will pass by. But blind Bartimaeus, why is the Bible calls him blind? Because regardless of his limitation, he says, I will have my day. Are you know what I'm saying? Regardless of his physical limitation, he says, if I need something, sometimes we want God. But we got to come to a place where we need him so bad, like Bartimaeus. Hallelujah. Blind Bartimaeus was so blind that the only thing he could see was darkness. 
but he did not carry, he did not care about what he could not see. He only leaned, he only understood, but if Christ is passing by, is Christ passing by right now? What does the Bible tell us? That where two or are in his is, you believe that. Oh, you see, sometimes I talk about prophetic, but today is not about prophetic. But today is about the word of God telling you how you are to function. We are not reading the story of Bartimaeus. Are you what I'm saying? We are reading our. The report about what is about to happen to me now. <laughs> God wrote it then. Does it make sense? For he already wrote, the Bible said that he knew me before I was in my mother's womb. And he counted my days. And my life is written in his book. Hallelujah. So the report of what is about to happen to me, why? Because it says that my words are spirit and life. And he said it does not profit to the flesh. Meaning that if you want to operate in that word as you're hearing it, just like blown by Timaeus, he heard the word that it was Jesus passing by. And suddenly the story of Jericho started repeating in his life. Suddenly the miracle that has happened in Jericho is about to happen in his life. Suddenly the miracle that has happened to Bartimaeus is about to happen in my life. In your life too. Hallelujah. He's in the revelation. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You see, nobody came to tell him it was Jesus. It was the need that was inside that created the desire to say, today I must have something. But he was at the same spot many times. Are you what I'm saying? He was at the same spot many times. There are some people, there are some of you watching right now, what God wants to do in your life has to pass over the way you think. Are you know what I'm saying? Because until God breaks those barriers in order to enter and, oh, Jesus Christ. What he wants to do has to go over. For the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. What we think or ask according to the power that worketh in us. So what are you asking of? What are you thinking of God? He says he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all of it. And when he heard he was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to, hallelujah. Amen. Give me that in the amplifier, please. So we are still in Mark chapter 10. Verse 47, the Amplified Version. Go ahead, please. When Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout. He began to shout. People of God, listen. <laughs> the man of God I was hearing, he said something that was very profound. He said, when we go to church, Oh, that, that touched me so bad. He said, when we go to church, we have choirs, we have music, we have all those things. But what attracts God to move in the supernatural is not the anointing of the person. It's not the choir and the music. It's the demand and the needs. And as he was saying it, the word of God came back to my spirit. Clarify it and certify what he said. Because indeed, the Bible says wherever he went, he was healing. You cannot heal those who are good. 
right? You cannot deliver those who are fine. And this reason for when he was speaking to the Pharisee, he would just pass them by. Because the Pharisee always were saying, we see. The Pharisee were always saying, we find. You know what I'm saying? They had need, but they act like they had no need. <laughs> Jesus. So Jesus said, okay, as you act like it, we act like I don't see you, Baba. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he went to his armed people. Although they knew him, they acted like they had no needs. So he could not do miracles. And then the man of God said, bring. He said, bring. Jesus Christ. He said, bring me to prostitute. And you will see the presence of God manifested. And I said, you're right. Because what brings the presence of God in a sense of manifestation is exactly the needs of the people. Why do you want Christ to manifest to somebody who does not need what he wants to manifest for? The Bible has confirmed it so and over. So, we go to church. The brother comes, and the brother Jean is torn over here, and then his thing is over here. You see, you have no need. The guy is walking by with his Jean, and he's looking like a, a drug addict. The only thing you can see is, look at him. But you see, he's in need. The prostitute who has a cloth already squeezed on her. She looks like a, a sardine packed in. When she walks by your church, she enters in. You look at yourself well-dressed. You look at her and then you say, hmm, look at her. But you see, the prostitute whom the Lord has delivered the demon from, he did not do deliver the demon from the Pharisee. But they were full of demon too. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Pharisee needed also help. The Pharisee also needed a salvation. The Pharisee also needed a miracle. The Pharisee also needed a touch, but he didn't do anything. So as the Lord started pouring out, pouring out, and pouring out, I realized that it's how we appreciate the presence of God, how we enter in that presence and let him work in us in a way that is unusual to our way of thinking. That's how the need is created. And like Bartimaeus, when we hear that this is Jesus passing by, we no longer do those sweet, you know, the sweet and nice, cute prayer. Oh, Lord Jesus, would you please heal me? No! <laughs> the Bible says, he shall! Hey, Jesus! But you see, there were some neighbor Christian next to him. They were the disciples. Yeah. The disciples, well, what, 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 what's wrong with you? <laughs> Shh! <laughs> oh, 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 hallelujah! The disciple says, we know Jesus. We've been walking with him. We've been dining with him, so we know him very well. Yo, what, 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 why are you shouting like that? Shh! They had no need. They had no need. Please bring me back to the word of God, please. Amplify version. When, when but, Bartimaeus uh -huh. heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and you see, say. Here's the thing. The thing that oftentimes we want the Holy Ghost to fall on us for us to be. <laughs> But he did not have the Holy Ghost. All he had was his voice. Hallelujah. He attracted the power of God with the sound of his voice. And yet he did not have the Holy Ghost. And he began to shout and say it. Jesus, son of David, Messiah, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. Amen. Can somebody shout with me? Jesus, Jesus. son of David, Jesus. Messiah, Jesus. have mercy on me. I have needs I cannot even pray for. I have 
have needs deep down in my soul from the womb that has straightened, that has started from the time I was in the belly of my mother. The wounds of the words of my father. The wounds of the word of my mother. The wounds of the word of my friends that has penetrated my soul and I inside. I pray but I still not delivered. I fast but I still not delivered. I trust him but I still not see it. I beg him. It's not coming past. The word of God said that all he did he was to shout. For I will shout my faith through. He didn't shout because there were many people. He didn't shout because God could not hear him. Because the word of God says that he can hear your thoughts. Hallelujah. But he understood. He was in a position where he did not need to act like a cute guy. He understood. He was in a position where he did not need to, to do anything but to shout unto the Lord. And he experimented the wall of Jericho falling out of his life just like in the time of Joshua. A thousand years after. He experimented thousand years after he experimented the same happening. And then verse 48 says what? Many sternly rebuked him, telling him to keep still and many sternly rebuked him, telling him to keep still and be quiet. That's the elders of the church. That's the apostles. That's the doctors. That's the prophets. That's the pastors. That's the sisters. That's the brothers. Are you know what I'm saying? They say we don't do like that here. <laughs> Hallelujah. We don't do like that in our church. We don't do like that in our prayer. We don't do like that in our house. We don't do like that in our presence. We don't operate like this. Some of them were certainly telling him, you know, the spirit of God lights order. <laughs> Be quiet. Ah, Jesus. And then what happened? So. Read again. Many Stanley. Many Stanley uh -huh. rebuked him, mm -hmm. telling him to keep still uh -huh. and be quiet. But he kept on shouting all out all of them, all, all the more. Hallelujah. Amen. You see. The one who were telling him be quiet, they were walking with Jesus. They were following Jesus. I hear what I'm saying. They certainly saw many things he has done, but they were not touched. They were not in that need he was. He was in a need that needed something. He was in a need that could not just act like a cute guy. He was in a need that could not simply say, Lord, would you please help me? No. The Bible said he understood that he has to bring out what he has inside. And he shouted. So when people told him, stop what you're doing, it does not sound right. It does not look right. It does not act right. The God, the word of God, the word of God says, he shouted even the You see, Bartimaeus, he was blind, but he could not, he was blind, but he could go from place to place. Are you what I'm saying? Although he was blind, he could go from place to place. What it means is that you are a child of God. There are things you don't see, but you still function. Hallelujah. There are things you don't see, but you still function. But there are things you need to see. So you will function the more. Hallelujah. So even though I am anointed, even though I know God, even though I worship him, even though I follow him, if I do not have a need, then I should be dead. Are you know what I'm saying? Because as a child of God, it ought to be a need in my life. It ought to be... A need in my heart, in my life, for Christ to feel it, for Christ to work on it, for Christ to do something unusual in it. Because you see, I walk with the same need every day, but, but, but you see, something needs to change. There, there is a wound deep inside my soul that makes me be completely outside of the touch. And I know that I need that set free freedom. I know that I need this to go. But you see, I walk with it. Uh, you know, sometimes you get used to the way things work in your life. 
But God says, if there is a man who has a need, there is a God who can supply all of his need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For he can supply all of your need in glory in Christ Jesus. You know, sometimes when we sing, we say, oh, Lord, I just want to say, Papa, thank you. I want to see you. But what do you want? Don't you need to see him? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go back to the word. And many sternly rebuked him, telling him what? To, to keep still and, and be quiet. Uh -huh. But he kept on shouting okay. out all the more. Mm -hmm. Son of David, mm -hmm. Messiah, have mercy on me. Look at this. The Lord knows the thought of everyone. The Lord knows the thought of every single one of us. So the Lord knew his need. The Lord knew exactly what he needed. But the Lord was passing by asking if he did not know. You know what I'm saying? Because Christ did not stand. He did not stop. He was continually walking, passing by. But the man shouted. He shouted out his need. He, he shouted his faith. And they told him, please, we don't do that here. Have you ever been in a church where when you start clapping, everybody like, <laughs> we, we, we don't do that there. I went one time in a church, a yeah, Mennonite, Mennonite church. When I arrived in, I was dressed with a red suit. Just, just the same like that, but in red. And then I had my beard. You see, the Mennonite, they don't keep the beard there. Shave. It's only the Amish who keep the beard. So I came in. When when my wife dropped me, when I was coming, the women are standing here, the men are standing over here. All of them turned like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. And in the Mennonite night church, all the cars that they have are black. And we came with a great car, yo. We already know you're a stranger here. <laughs> so a stranger in a great car, in a red suit being black, with a beard. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I carried on as if I did not know what was going on with them. And I went into the church because they wrote on that top of the church. They say all are welcome. So I was going to try it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But between what they wrote on the door of the church and between how they acted, it was a difference. Hallelujah. So when I entered in, I felt like I was not welcome. I entered in. And there was a little boy who was sitting right on the next row for the entire sermon. And, 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 and then do you know what the sermon was about? About your dress. And then, about <laughs> your clothes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the pastor was saying, even though some don't look like us and some don't dress like us, I say, I'm here. <laughs> so whether he planned it or whether he did not plan it, but he, he, I'm here. <laughs> Amen. So the little boy was uh, right on the front row right after me. He spent his entire time looking at me. <laughs> he spent his entire time. He was amazed that a black guy in a red suit with a beard in the gray car has come in his church and sitting right behind him. He was like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were all waiting. Whether I will get up, whether I will go out, they all were waiting. I did not budge. I said, today we're going to have all the Holy Ghost here. <laughs> I'm sitting. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then the pastor, at the end of the show, he says, you are welcome to come again. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you see, 
They were not doing anything wrong. That's the level of how they can see. Hallelujah. That's the limit, that's the dimension on how and where they can see. But in the life of Bartimaeus, like in my life, although I can function because Bartimaeus was functioning, he was not on the bed, he was not on the sick bed, he was sick, he was, I mean he was blind, but he was functioning. How many child of God function, but still yet God wants to bring them in a place where they still have to see the glory? So many sternly rebuked him, telling him to keep still be, to keep still and be quiet. But he kept on shouting all the more, son of David, Messiah, have mercy on me. Do you have a need? Do you have a N-E-E-D? Now let me tell you something. They did not tell him shout. They told him be quiet. But the burning need that was inside him shouted. Are you what I'm saying? The burning need that was inside him caused him to shout and to say, Lord, have mercy on me. Yeah. You see, in the word that he was saying, it was, Lord, please draw closer to my need. Jesus does not need to be near you to heal you. He can heal you from afar. Hallelujah. For the Bible already said that, that he, as he was speaking, the word went all the way down and then healed who? The, 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 the servant of the, the centurion. Hallelujah. So he can heal from afar. But you see, there are certain need that needs him to draw closer. He's like a surgeon. He needs he need to draw closer to, to see how he can. And in the life of Bartimaeus, he shouted. And when he shouted, what happened? Verse 49. Verse 49. Jesus stopped and said, call him. Jesus. Okay, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to. Um, come. Come. I become. So, all y'all stand here. I'm going to do the blind by the meals. And Jesus, come. <laughs> I said, Jesus, <laughs> Fidel, come. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. So what I want you to do is to just walk around as if you were Jesus walking around. I mean, continuing your path. And I will shout the first time you don't stop. I will shout the second time you will stop. And then you will say, call him. Okay? Okay? Go ahead. So you all start talking. It's talking out loud. Well, hey, what, 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 what's going on? What's going on? Jesus! Son of David! Have mercy on me! Jesus! Son of David! Have mercy on me. Call him. Take courage. <laughs> He's calling for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But at that point, when Jesus Christ called on him, he was not seen healed. You see, God called you, but you are still in need. God called you, but you st you're still in need. God have called you, but there are things in your life that are still not functioning right. God called you. You know you have a call on your life. You know you are a child of God, but still in your life, nothing is functioning like you should see it functioning. And then you are in thinking, what am I doing wrong? 
And the Bible says, what did he say? Go ahead. The microphone for him, please. The word I said, why? He said, what? Call him. And then, next word is take. Go ahead. Take, take courage. courage. Uh-huh. Get up. He is calling for you. Hallelujah. And then, the Bible said that he did what? Throwing aside. Listen. Listen. His, his cloak is like the life you have. His cloak is like a protection you have. His cloak is like the way you do usually. His cloak is like something in your life that has finally be like one with you. It's like your behavior. It's like your attitude. It's like your character. It's like fears. It's like your wounds. He was like cloth. He was, he, was, he was accustomed to it. He was going everywhere with it. When you see the cloak, you know that this is Bartimaeus. Because you can recognize him by the cloth he was always wearing. But then the Lord caught him. When the Lord caught him, the first thing that he did was to throw his cloth or cloak aside you see you want to see god do something different in your life but you want still to operate the way you always operate you want god to do something different in your life you want god to touch you in a different way but you still want to operate the same way you operate you got to let go of something to receive for he cannot put a new piece of cloth on the hold. God was about to put something new on him, but the hold has to go. God was about to pour out a new wine, but the hold has to go. Because he knows that if he does not let go of the hold, a waste will be. And then, throwing his cloth aside, the Bible says he did what? He was sitting. He threw his cloth inside. And Jesus. You see, some of you don't understand the prophetical attitude of that guy. He did not get up and walk like gently. You feel what I'm saying? He, he did not get up and, and then walk. He knew that the master had now caught him. Until then, he was shouting. But when the master heard the second shout, the master saw that he was not bothered by how people see him. The master understood that he was not usual. The master understood that he was not just a simple guy who was afraid on how and what people would tell about him. He was not afraid. He demonstrated to the master that I can be uncomfortable until you give me the comfort. So I will not just sit down on the pew waiting for the glory of God to come. I'm going to jump and come to that glory. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the word of God says he jumped out. Throwing his cloak aside. And Jesus says what? What do you want me to do for you? You see, how many times did the Lord ask you, what do you want? And you start telling him all your problems. You see, when you don't have a need, you don't have an answer. Some of you, the Lord is arm coming and passing by. What do you need, my son? What do you need, my daughter? Hey, oh, for a long time, hey, hey, I've been in this thing. I don't understand. People have treated me so bad. I do not ask you, what's your problem? I do not ask you, what's the list of your problem? I say, what do you need? What's the answer you're going to give me for the shout that you made? What's the answer you're going to give me for the, all the time of prayer that you've been made? What do you want me? do for you you see until then he was still blind 
trying to walk by and he couldn't see Jesus. Hallelujah. He couldn't see him. He tried by all means. He could only have an imagination of what it could be like. What God wants to do in your life, you have still to see it. I hear what I'm saying. What, what, what God wants to operate in your life, you still to see it. But you need to shout your faith through. I hear what I'm saying. Even though he know your needs, you must you yourself shout it out through. Until he says, come. But when you come, come like a child who's running to his father he hasn't seen for so long. Are you what I'm saying? Some of you, you have become accustomed. You have become familiar to the presence of God. So you don't even move in the presence of God. All you have is like you are familiar to it. But the blind, he's, sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then he says, go ahead. What do you want? Go ahead. Okay. What do you want me to do for you? He answered by saying, Rabboni, let me regain my. Somebody say with me. Rabboni, let me regain my sight. You see, there are certain type of operation in your life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are certain type of operation in your life that God wants to to do certain, certain things that he wants to do in your life that are unusual. But he wants you to learn to shut out your faith. He wants you to learn to speak out your faith. He wants you to, to act like crazy. Let me tell you something. You cannot be serious with God all the time. Like, like I, I, you know what I'm saying? When I say serious, I'm talking uh, like uh, well put together. David. And the way he danced, he was like a madman. He was like a mad man. Blind. Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, he understood that he had to switch his father. <laughs> he understood that he has to switch how ah, he was born. He has to switch something, but he could not do it. The only one who is able to do so is the master passing by. And the word of God confirms that Christ told us that where you and I as today, the Sunday of our day, being gathered, the word of God says, he said, and he said in the word that he is in the midst of us. Christ being in the midst of them, Bartimaeus did not go back home as he came. If you go back as you came, it means you have no need. Or you did not express your need. Or you acted like you have no need. Are you what I'm saying? Because when Bartimaeus realized that he came home from home and been in that spot, in that place where he certainly used to be, and then he heard that Jesus Christ was passing by, when he shouted, they told him quiet. He shouted the more. Finally, the Lord called him. But when the Lord called him, he knew I need to get out and then leave and then throw away something that is preventing me to advance. If you question the power of God, the power of God will not function in your life. You see, the child of God does not have a spirit of criticism. Meaning, you can talk about everything, but you don't know the answer of it. A child of God has a spirit of discernment. When the, the children of Ishaka, they understood the times and the seasons, right? 
Jesus Christ told also to the Pharisee, he says, see, you understand the time and the season. You understand that when the cloud is red, it's going to rain. But you don't understand the time of your visitation. And the Lord is speaking to us right now. How much are you ready to receive? It depends on how much you want to be empty. How much are you willing to receive? Depends on how much you are ready to let go. If God has to do a new thing in your life, you need to throw away that cloak. You see, that cloak has been functioning with you for a long time, but it was not the full will of God. You know what I'm saying? The way you operate has been functioning, but it's not the full will of God. God has something to do in your life that is greater than what you still have to imagine. But are you ready to receive it? Bring me back the word. Bring back the word. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? You see, sometimes the problem with Christians is that they act like they, they, they camouflage their need. The Lord will ask you, what do you want me to do for you? You will say, oh Lord, so I may love you the more. But you, you, see, you, see, you see, don't lay off him the more because <laughs> that was not the real need. <laughs> I have what I'm saying. He does not mind that you tell him your actual need. You need money. You need health. You need wealth. You need reconciliation. You need forgiveness. Your actual need. You see, in this case here, when he said, what do you want me to do for you? It was an actual need that was touching his actual physical life. The problem with Christians is that they are more spiritual than God. <laughs> what do you need? What do you want? Oh, Lord. So. He said, that's why you shouted like that. <laughs> why did you shout? Why do you pray? Why do you pray? What is your need? It's not what is your assumed need. What is your expected need? Hallelujah. What is your actual need? You see... When Christ would ask me, Lord, uh, and would ask me, son, what do you want me to do for you? I would tell him, grow the church. Hallelujah. But do I need a grown church in order to praise him? No. Hallelujah. If he asks me, what do you want me to do for you? I would tell him, have all my debt gone. Can I not praise him, even if I had debt? But you see, you have to be, give me the word. Sp sp uh, yes, I thank you. <laughs> uh, specific and truthful. He's the one who told us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. But he's also the same one who says that these things, the things he's talking about are not spiritual things. Because that word in Hebrew, uh, pardon, in, uh, in Greek, is not spiritual things. It's things in the sense, the sense of like uh, when God told you, uh, Solomon, I'm going to give you things. Bless you with things. 
Sometimes we want to be so spiritual. That, you see, if you don't have, what, 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 what are you going to give to heal? To who? You cannot pray, oh Lord, provide to the poor. Why, 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 how are you? <laughs> Why don't you provide to the poor? You have to be truthful. When the Lord is asking you, what do you want me to do for you? And the question now the Lord is asking, what? do you want me to do for you? But you see, some of you, you have to think about it. It means, it means, it means there is a problem. There is a problem. You cannot work with such a great God and act like he's not a great God. All good things come from the Father of light. If we who are evil, who know how to give good things to our children, how much more the one who made us. The perception on God, on how you see him, I said the perception on how you see him, can cause you to be afraid of asking certain things or uncomfortable. Let me tell you something. Between what you think and what you say, which one go here? Both, right? So imagine yourself, you go before him in his presence, you're thinking about something but you're saying something else. Who are you defrauding? <laughs> this is what I'm saying. What do you want me to do for you? Bring me the, the verse again, please. And Jesus said, What do you want me to do for you? Mm -hmm. The blind man said to him, Rabboni, my master, let me regain my sight. Verse 52. Verse 52. Jesus said to him, Go. Your faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Go your faith. Go your faith. Whose faith? Yes, my own faith. Bartimaeus faith. faith. Which is your faith, my faith. Here's the thing. Is the Lord Jesus who heals? Is the Lord Jesus who gives sight to the blind? But the function here that has triggered that miracle or trigger that happening was the faith contained in the shout of Bartimaeus. He did not shout to be heard. He shout because he trusted. Hallelujah. He shouted because he trusted and he knew that that man he has heard of, that was the day of his day. Bring me the verse, please. Jesus said to him, mm -hmm. Go, your faith and confident trust in my power has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and began following Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, you want to be in a place where the need you have to which the Lord answered you comes to pass not a year from now. Are you what I'm saying? There are times where things will come to pass a year from now, two years from now, ten years from now. But today, we see in the word of God that what he needed was to come to pass when?
Give me the word again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith and confident trust, trust in my power has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and began following Jesus on the road. In Jericho, when they shouted, immediately the wall fell. The wall that was preventing them to follow the road. The wall that was preventing them to see the promised land. Immediately, when he shouted, the wall fell. The wall that was preventing him to walk the road and to see. Are you what I'm saying? Where God is calling you, something needs to follow first. Where God is sending you, something needs to fall off first. Where God is bringing you, something need to fall off first. And immediately. And immediately. That was somebody. Immediately. Listen. Do you trust the word of God? How much? Do you trust the word of God like uh, Martha trusted God? Because I can tell you, she trusted him. But she trusted him in certain level. She trusted that he was able to heal the sick. She trusted he was able to raise the dead. But she was stuck when she knew a situation was thinking. Hallelujah. She was stuck. Because a mindset told her, you know, this one... And that's where when you pray, you act like, oh, Lord, if it's your will, let it be. <laughs> no. I always said, and when, when somebody pray and say, oh, Lord, if it's your will, let it be. If it's your will, we come to pass. That's doubt. Because you must know the will before you say the will. So you play like domino game. Lord, if your will to be let it go. And when the thing comes, oh Lord, why, 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 why? You must know the will so that you are able to say, Lord, let your will be. But if you don't know the will, and then you say, let your will be, it's like you playing domino. Are you what I'm saying? You must know the will like the Lord knew the will. The will was that he had to die on the cross. So when he said, let your will be, it was with Hallelujah. What is your need? I will shout my faith through. What is your need? The problem is that, let me explain to you. A hypocrite man, he needs something. Let's say, you need money to solve a situation. And then you say, oh, Lord, even if you have nothing, it's all for your glory. And after you come around, you say, Lord, I need something. You hypocrite. Because you already say, if, if you have nothing, you follow him. You, have, you confirm it and you confess it. By saying, oh Lord, I don't need anything. He's only you. Here's the problem. The problem is that you must keep your word. You must keep your word. Oh Lord, I don't need anything. Okay. Now you broke. And now you... You, you, you are under all attack and you are under all, 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 all hell lose and, and, and now you are under all, 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 
all debts and now you are under all, all trouble and trials. Why don't you continue to say, oh, I only need you. Because you were not sincere and truthful the first time. You were sounding like a genuine, but the Lord did not want you to act like. He said, what do you want me to do for you? Be sincere, specific, and truthful. For the Lord will not be offended because you ask him something. Will he? Can the Lord be offended? Listen, if you are a child of your father, a child of your mother, and you ask something to your father who, who even if he's, even if what you're asking does not make sense, your father will not be offended. He may not give to you. Hallelujah. Amen. He may give to you, but he will not be offended. You cannot go to your father to say, Lord, uh, 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 father or mother, uh, you are, let's say you are, you are 10 years old, and then you say uh, you want a car. Oh, okay. Your father will not be like, you're crazy. Why are you asking a car? You know what I'm saying? He might be amazed, but he will not give you that car. Amen? But it does not mean he does not intend to give you a car by the time you will be ready to have the car, right? But he will not be offended. But he's a... F He's a human, finite person who lives in this flesh. How much God? Because God knows already our thoughts. So what we say that proceed from what our heart has been full of, we're not surprising. So the question that the Lord is living with you. What do you want me to do for you? Today, not tomorrow, what do you you see, it's not what do you want me to do for your friend. Hallelujah. What do you want me to do for your parent? What do you want me to do for you? He wants to supply. Amen. He wants to supply. You know the supply chain? He wants to supply. The order that you made on Amazon. <laughs> he wants to supply. He wants to bring intentionally so that you may know that he is an answering God. See, when you say, Lord, I need this, he said, my son, take it. You will know, not hope. You will know that not only he answer your prayer, I mean, he, he hear at your prayer, but he also answer it. God wants to answer your prayer so you continue in the knowledge of him. He does not want you to be in a place where you are wondering whether he's hearing you or you are wondering whether it is going to answer. He desires to answer your prayer, but you got to be truthful. Can you play the thing for me, please? Hallelujah. He desires to answer your prayer. But you have to be truthful. He wants, he will, he lived among men in the physical flesh. And the word of God says that the uh, he has went through all of our limitation and temptation of our every, every 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 one of them. He experienced all of them. So we will not think 
He is just a God staying there, but he is able to come close. He is able to draw his near near you and say, speak it. He not only wants to show you that he does care for you, but he is also willful, willing to supply all of your need. He said, you see, you don't have because you don't ask. You don't have because you don't ask. And you will say, but Lord, you know what I need. Yes, it does. That's why it told you ask. It will be an affront to God when it tells you ask and then you say, Lord, you know. No, this is disobedience. Because the word says it tells you ask. But you want to do the way you want. He said, no. If you obey me, then ask me. And he says, you will ask and you shall receive and your joy will be full. Your joy will be complete. There are things that you know you need that the Lord says, I want to fulfill it. I want to supply it so that your joy will be complete. But you have to ask in truth. In the sincerity of your soul. See, sometimes you make prayers. And those prayers are empty. They sound like a just a barrel, a barrel that is empty. You got to be intentional. You got to be sincerely intentional. Lord. That I may regain my sight. Bartimaeus did not have his sight. He was functioning. But he was limited. So he says, Lord. I want you to break the limitation of my life. I want you to take down that wall that is blinding me. I want you to break away that wall, that stone that is at the door of my heart. When he told to the disciples in the book of John chapter 11, at the death of Lazarus, he told them, take away the stone. He wanted them, not an angel, but them to take away the stone. The stone he wanted them to take away, he was able to take it away. But he wanted them to take away the stone. When you read the word, you see that the angel came and they rolled the stone of Jesus Christ away. So they are able to do that. Hallelujah. But he tells you to be willful, willing to take away the stone and to tell your need. Notice he does not want to supply your prayers. He wants to supply all your needs. I'm going to give you a moment to talk to him. Like Bartimaeus talked to him. See yourself like before the judge in the court. And you need justice. What you do is that you talk to the judge. See yourself before your father. 
and you have a need, you talk to your father. So there are times the Lord wants you to talk to him, not to pray. Does it make sense? The portion and the posture of prayer sometimes puts you in a position that is different than when you talk to your father. Does it make sense? It says, let us reason. In the book of Isaiah chapter 43, it says, come, let us reason. It says, state your case that you may be acquitted. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you a few moments to talk to your father. To talk to your good father. He asks you and I, what do you want me to do for you? People of God, listen. The word of God says in the book of Psalms, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall. Can, can you put that for me on the screen quickly? Delight yourself in the Lord. And he, your Lord, he, your father, he, your king, he shall, amen, grant you the desire of your heart. Psalms 34. 37 verse 4 delight yourself in the Lord last Sunday the Lord was telling us that we ought to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God so he may lift us up in due time today he's telling us as we delight ourselves in him he will give us the desire and petition of our heart here's the thing if I ask God for material things it is conditioned because I know I want them to spend in this kingdom are you what I'm saying so I will not be afraid to ask him Lord bless me so when you desire something that is from him is because you learn to delight in him and because you learn to delight in him then the desire in your heart will not be impure does it make sense because you have learned to know his ways and his thought and his avenues and so you understand that he will not take pleasure in a bad steward he will not take pleasure in an unfaithful servant. So after you have learned at the school of Christ, now you can say, Lord, this is what I need. This is what I need. 